Right, so it's a sunny afternoon and uh, we've had a delivery arrive. And uh, frustratingly, I've been a little off colour for the last few days. So uh, we're doing desk jobs. And uh, this is the new delivery that arrived. And uh, we're going to go over fitting this out. Firstly, we get a nice little carry bag with this thing. We get some stickers and some information, which we will read. And we get the main event here, which uh, we will see once we get rid of this box. This, if you haven't already guessed, is a Chiapa Little Badger. And uh, we have a little warning sticker on here. Um, don't dry fire, which, uh, yeah, you mess up your firing pin in this specific model. So, uh, yeah, we don't want to do that. But um, this weighs about 1.3 kilos, not a lot of weight. Um, the Pictini rails feel like they're plastic. Some sections of this feel that way. The buttstock is, this is very lightweight. Um, there is a TDX model, apparently, where these two sections, once you break it open, can separate. Um, you're missing the bottom wire on here, and that will fold up, meaning the whole thing can fit into uh, about 80 mil poly, which would be good, but um, we're going to work with this one. This was on the shelf. Had this on um, lay-by for a while. It's worth doing rifles on or guns on lay-by here um, because for the American audience uh, here, in Australia, even though I have a firearms license, uh, I still have to get a permit to acquire for each and every firearm, which can take up to 28 days. Uh, with a new online system, it can be as short as two or three days. They wanted to do a bit of checking up on my background, and so it took a couple of days. But uh, it's all good. We've got that here, and um, it's all paid off, and it's all mine. We'll give it a bit of a clean up because this has been the floor model, and it's got a little bit of fingerprinting and everything on it. We'll give it a good clean up and we may even um, end up painting over this with some, or um, well, leaving that exposed obviously, but we'll paint over the whole thing in uh, military green at some point. But anyway, um, I have some optics, we're going to see how they fit. Now, as a general rule of thumb, I don't normally talk about firearms on this channel. I have briefly brushed on it a little bit, but it is a polarizing topic. I don't object to anybody having their opinion. But some people express it rather aggressively, and uh, that's a little uncomfortable for me at times. So I tend not to just brush on this topic at all. Okay, we have our box of scope bits. So in here we have a few things. I've got this dinky little laser dot here, which is a um, nice little bit of gear. Um, at least for low recoil applications, which I think you'd call this. I've got some other scope mounts and some bits and pieces off other rifles in here. And a box of nuts and bolts and... Rando Allen keys. So um, the first thing I'm thinking here is uh, when you close this, that bit collides with this bottom Pictini rail. Now they have three screws in there, so I could potentially trim that off and allow it just to close just a little bit more there. Um, it might work if I trim it down or if I take it off completely. My plan was to mount this guy on the bottom here on the foregrip and then mount a reflex sight up here but I'm thinking that might be more economic to mount that off to one side take that bottom rail off and let it close up a little better now, in this other box we have ourselves a um, a Chinese made red dot reflex sight uh, which I've covered in my donations and deliveries we'll get to that in a minute um, now I know that the Chinese ones are not as great as the like $450 ones but I'm mounting this to a plastic Pictini rail. There's only so much accuracy I'm going to get out of this. So we have some Torx screws here. I'm going to remove this bottom rail and I'm going to get a ruler and see if removing that helps it close down anymore. Let's have a look and see what size will fit this. Sometimes you can get the um, hex drivers in there. Actually they will interface better than the Torx bits. Now this driver has just a little bit bigger diameter which gives it bit more leverage which allows us to just break those screws free a little bit oh they sound like they're or oh, oh, they feel like they're almost square that you ever know when you pull something out of a thread and it has that chunky feeling like it's been pressed and not rolled now what I'm gonna do before I take that screw out finally we're gonna leave that last one in we're gonna see how much this closes on the tip here let's do metric so we are, from the point that I plan to measure here, about 12 centimetres. Um, for those who are interested in Imperial, 
It's about four and a half inches. All right, let's see if we close up a little bit more here. That actually does look like it's closed up a little more. Let's take a look. So that has gone down to, how did I measure this? I had it flipped over that way, didn't I? So I measured through to that. That's about seven centimeters or two and a half inches. Okay, so that bottom Pictini rail is gonna stay off. Um, that does help it close down quite a bit smaller and uh, that is gonna make all the difference for where I wanna store it. Now, I've had an idea. I'd like to keep this nice and flat. We'll get all this out of the way. So uh, having laser hanging off the side would ruin that. I wonder if this reflex sight is gonna sit up high enough that it might sit above the laser. That would make it a little congested there, but um, I wonder if that'd work. It would look a bit weird, but you know, it might, might actually work. If you're interested, um, this little reflex sight, it's got um, several different little filters for cross, dot and circle and all that. Um, and it's got red and green and different levels of intensity. And it runs on a little watch cell in there. This little bit here, I'm pretty sure is plastic. So, fun fact about this, um, we'll use our loose Pictini rail to demonstrate this. There is a uh, bolt along the back in here. You can't just slide this on. I think it's designed to fit through one of these grooves so it can't slide up and down. Sensible, but um, a little irritating. Which actually does mean, oh, I might have to remove those rear sights. I've got to sight the thing in anyway. So yeah, we might take them off. So conceivably I could pack these in here, but there's not really enough room to get my finger in to turn the laser dot on. Bit of a pain. So rear sights are going to go. Okay, I did watch a... Um, a little uh, review of this some time ago uh, where they did explain how to get these sights off oh, and there's a split pin there so I've just wound my sights right across out of the whack anyway so I definitely need to sight it in now anyhow we're gonna pop that split pin off all right excuse me while I munch on some peppermints to uh, keep my throat clear all right that's um, circle off go that winds out that pops off so we have three parts so clip the windage elevation or the sorry the windage knob not the elevation elevation is done by sliding up and down the ramp here and while there are detents in there they don't work very well so um yeah the plastic sides i wouldn't rely on them anyway now there's a torque screw in the top here i got to pull that out yeah i'm willing to bet they've done the intelligent thing and used the same screws across everything here and that strangely enough took a lot less force to break so I don't think they um, secured that down much I guess they figured you'd figure it out when you got it a little bit of glue under there it's all right so that's the that's the rear sides all right um, so I had a visitor somebody that wanted to have a look at this so uh, I've been chatting about that let's stick our laser dot in the front here Oh, I haven't done these up tightly yet. I just want to do them up loosely and see if I am actually going to be able to target anything with them. So let's have a look here. We'll angle our camera up first, why not? Look off into the junk into the background here. And let's have a look. Can we see through the dot here? So we can see through the green dot. We should be able to see over the top of the laser there. That should be all right. So, um, Hopefully that works out. I guess it depends how close I sight it. If I sight it really close, it might be looking down over the top of that. But I, I think I'm going to be going for about 100 yards or thereabouts. Um, we'll see how we go. All right, well, I've got it mounted. I'm not sure how well this is going to work. Uh, but crucially, in this dimension, it keeps it very compact. I'm not sure how well it's going to work there. But I've got plenty of room to get my finger in here. Um, if this does become an obstruction, I can probably shift this back a bit or shift this forward we'll see where it goes from my eye perspective i should probably try it at some point but being a reflex sight i don't need to uh focus up close so being a little closer is not so much of a problem um but yeah i uh there is storage for some ammo up the back here um obviously under australian law you got to remove your ammo before you store it like that you can't store it with the ammo um one of the other things is it can't be fired while folded so of course it can't be. Um, if I was to just remove this stock, 
uh, that would put me in violation as well. This stock's got to stay on here for the overall rifle length. If I pull that off, I'd probably be considered to have a pistol, which falls into a different license. I'd get in a lot of trouble for that. So that's not happening. Um, but yes, as for the function in here, it does have a, a shell extractor in the back here. So as you pull it out, you pull the shell out a little bit like some shotguns. So you can just pull it out here. Um, firing pin just emerging through here. Now I'm told that um, with this you can't slam fire it, which you see here. You can't just pull the trigger and have the hammer come back. You can half cock it and that locks your trigger. So that's a safety at half cock. You've got to deliberately pull it all the way up to be able to release that hammer. So uh, yeah, and I think the reason being rim fire, if you dry fire it, slams the firing pin into the rim, buggers your firing pin up. You're gonna have a bad day if you do that. So uh, there is this bit of Pictini rail up here, which apparently you can attach a hand grip to. Um, I would be careful about doing that at least in Australia because once you do this it can be considered to be uh, a pistol I guess or a long colt or something like that just I don't really want to make the powers that be angry about that sort of stuff and uh, I would sort of conflict a bit with my shooting style anyway so uh, you can move this stock back a little bit too um, you can extend it I um, I might do that okay so to get this uh, stock adjusted these uh, bits of rod here are actually threaded or at least partly threaded with one side shaved in here so they're not going to just wriggle out um, I've got to undo this and this and separate the whole control group um, and take this Pictini rail off to do that and I think undo that one as well okay so I had a look in this hole and it goes all the way through to the threaded rod this is actually molded part of the clamshell here so that is actually not removable Good thing because it's not in the way at least This was very loose There is a little uh, lock washer in there that comes out definitely want that um, This bit uh, is firm up All right, let's remove the other half of this Do that Keep our screws separate well, We wanted to do this one. This is a bigger torque bit. I'm glad they didn't use Torx tamper proof though. I would have had to go out to the shed for stuff. Oh, this is coming. It's slowly. Oh, ah. Ha. Okay, I was wondering about that. As if I took that nut and bolt out, would that pack down like that? That packs down almost as small as a TDX. I don't think that the uh, the coppers that have any trouble with me transporting it like that because it can't be fired. Now, are these screws different? Yes. So there are two different screws for the stock here. This one is a tapered head, this one's a flat head, or rather, um, I forget what the name of that head type is. Now, um, I'm told there is a spring in here that can fly out. I think it's the trigger return spring. Um, so, I'm being wary of that. I do see a spring up here somewhere, so I'm prepared for that to fly off. So we lift up just gently. And that's our release clip comes forward there. There is our control group. So I'll show you up close in case you're doing this and you need to know how to put it back together. I may need to do that too at some point myself. All right, this is our threaded section. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Come on, zoom in. There we go. So these are basically threaded sections. They've shaved one side off and they recess in here a little bit. And we can pop them out and we can pull them back. I say... About halfway is probably as safe as I'd care to do that and still have a bit of control over it, although it is fairly lightweight. Let's pull it back to that um, and we'll see what its shoulder's like. Let's come back to the zoom. I thought this was actually um, plastic, but it's... Right, we need to locate this on top of the pins. We need to pull our release lever back, which is where that spring comes out. All right. So we need to hold that in, not too much tension so it doesn't pop upwards. Locate our pins on the top of that, and then push down. That's good, that's good. Oh wait, don't dry fire, at least I don't have the breach in the way. That's a pretty strong spring on there. All right, that is functioning. I hear my apprentice trying to rickroll me in the background too. So let's put these two in. Now I don't recall which side that spring washer went in. 
Although I see some det some little grooves or detents in there from that side. So that is, I guess, where it went in. Let's put you back in. I've got some plans to go inside the, the stock here. Probably I might make a little 3D printed block to go over that just to help that stability a little bit. Okay, so surprisingly, that uh, extra half inch does actually make a fair bit of difference to the comfort level. So it is a bit more usable. So uh, all that's left now, really, uh, I need to clean up and uh, I'll take it out the field, I'll sight it in, um, I'll see how it works for a few days. And uh, if it's comfortable and this laser dot is not too far in the way, um, where's our laser dot there? If it doesn't get in the way, um, I'll probably, I'll mark it, I'll paint the thing nice um, military green with the same polyurethane paint that my Land Rovers use, uh, which is a nasty paint, mind you, but very durable. I will find an appropriate way to preserve the serial number here so I don't get in trouble for that, and uh, then we'll have some fun with it. Although, I guess if we've, you know what? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> it has a threaded barrel on the end. Although, not that I can really sensibly make any use of that uh, without getting in trouble. I mean, I could use a suppressor or a muzzle brake, which on a 22 is a bit pointless. However, anything you put on here looks like a silencer, and um, police are going to look at you very closely when you do that. And because silencers are kind of not really allowed here. Okay, tiny, tiny little hex bit here. And uh, that should come off here. It's just a grub screw. Pull off our protector. Take that off. All right, I think I can probably, I might find a nut or bolt or something and uh, that's the right thread for that. And um, I might uh, make a nice little chrome cap or something on it. I'll machine down a nut in the lathe just to make a nice little cover on it and I might knurl it. Now in walking through a couple of basic checks went to lock it and it doesn't lock. So I think when I've done this maybe I have misaligned that a little bit. I'll give that a quick little adjust and see what happens. So what's supposed to happen is when we fold it it's supposed to slide up over that and then clip in like that and then lock in there. What's happening is it's coming up to about here, not quite locking in. So let's investigate why that might be the case. We've been out in the shed and uh, we have shaved this piece down a little bit. So there is probably an official term for that. Now it clicks in properly, it goes all the way forward. That is much better, I'm much more happy about that. Last thing I want to do is fire this and have the breech pop open and stuff blow back in my face. Especially with shut, such a short rifle, it's going to be way up in my face. So I'm happier about that. Now, normally I would give this a bit of a demonstration of firing and whatnot. Um, I live in an area where I can't do that close to the house. And uh, using test ammunition to protect the firing pin. We get into Australian firearms law here. Using test ammunition at home is not legal. And uh, snap caps are also classified as um, test ammunition. So... I can't even put a snap cap in here in the house, so I'd be considered to have a loaded firearm and I'd get in all sorts of trouble for that. So we will take this bush in a different video where we're legally allowed to use it, where permits are allowed, and we'll have some fun. We'll sight it all in. Once all that's done, I might take all this off, paint it military green. I'm sure people get angry about that. Then I'll come back, put the scopes back on, sight it in all over again. We'll have some fun. Anyway, let me know what you think about the firearm topic. I am interested to know where my audience stands on that because I have people from that come here from Land Rovers, from the military stuff, to fixing kids' toys, to electronic background. So this is going to be a polarizing topic. It'll be interesting to see where we come from. But in any case, um, see you later. Thumbs up, I guess. And um, we'll catch up in another video.